And so I'll press the button on the first board and see what do I get on the terminal. As you can see, it prints the button pressed and the other board receives it and the LED is turned on. Now I press it again, the color will change. Like this, I press it again and again and so on. Let me do it on the other board. Like this, like this, like this. Okay. For this project, you'll need two MAX485 modules, which will convert the RS-232 uh, standard to the RS-485 one. And let me show you how do these modules work. So basically, we have two outputs, the A and B, and they are basically differential, meaning that when A is 1, B is 0, and vice versa. And so, when A is a 0 and B is a 1, the bit rate is a 0, and when it is the other way around, the bit rate is a 1, obviously. Okay, so uh, this will be the connection. So basically, you'll need to power them with 5 volts. Rx will be connected to R0, Tx to Di, and Re should be connected to Re. As you can see here, it says for Tx, Rx direction, pull pins high to transmit data and low to receive data. And basically, we will control these two pins with only one GPIO meaning that we'll pull it high to transmit data and pull it low to receive data. And so I'm using two ESP32C6, which have an RGB LED and we will control the RGB LED from, from, from the receiver by using the transmitter. And so let me show you the real connection. So basically we have here two ESP32C6. I powered them. I powered the RS45 modules with 5 volts and I connected the uh, DI and R0 to the UR peripheral of each module and I've connected the GPIO2 to the RE and DE from the second module and GPIO14 to the second converter. Okay, so that's basically it. Let me show you the code. Um, I have two codes, obviously, one for the first one and for the one for the second one. And the way we receive the UR data is by an event. Basically, it works like an interrupt, but the ESPID framework takes care of that interrupt. So we will need to enable the, LE, the LED strip because, because obviously we're using an RGB LED and the RGB LED is controlled by the RNT peripheral, which is basically like a timer, but it is mainly used in controlling RGB LEDs and it is more precise in terms of timing. And so here are we here we're configuring the LED strip. Basically the frequency of the RMT peripheral will be 10 MHz, the default source clock, and so on. Now we need to enable the interrupt for the GPIO button because uh, once I press the button on the ESP32, it will send some data to the other ESP32 and that receiver will turn on the RGB LED. And so here is the interrupt service routine. It's basically setting a variable and also I'm, pr I'm printing this on the terminal. And here we have the RS45 send. Basically we set the module in TX. As I said, you have to pull that GPIO high in order to set it as TX. Then we write the bytes and then we wait for the com transmission completion because Without it, it won't work. Now we set it back to Rx in order to receive back uh, data. Here we are initializing the GPIO used to control the mode of the RS45 converter, um, which is GPIO9. Here we are initializing the UART. And the way we can capture an event related to UART is by using a queue. So basically the way it works we have a queue which is constantly filled with any UART events whenever they are triggered. And so we will need the UART event queue when we are, we are installing the UART driver. Um, here we are initializing the UART and the GPIO which will control the modes, as I told you. Then we have the function which set the modes. And here we have the event task, which is basically the task that is polling for any incoming data. And so here we have the queue. And whenever there is an event triggered related to UART, that will be passed to this queue and we will enter this 
if statement. So basically, based on the event type, if you get data uh, received, we read the bytes, then we are looking for this string within the receive string because why not? That is, uh, I don't know, I have chosen this as an example. And we have here a variable which basically which is constantly incrementing and we, we do mod three. And basically, we will set a random color once we receive the data. Okay, we'll print something on the terminal and that's it. Now I have the main app, which is basically initializing the stuff, creating the task. And if I press the button, it will send the string that we're particularly looking for. And here we have the delay. So that's pretty much it. I have the second code over here. So I need to, uh, let me see if I, I can, uh, yes, like this. I'll um, flash both of the ports and see if it works. Okay, let me increase the size of the terminal over here and like this. And so I'll press the button on the first board and see what do we get on the terminal. As you can see, it prints the button pressed and the other board receives it and the LED is turned on. Now I press it again, the color will change like this. I press it again and again and so on. Let me do it on the other board like this, like this, like this. So that's it for today's video, guys. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I, I will reply to them.